People who live within the city limits or in locations with a central water source are on public water supplies. Public water supplies are regulated by the Safe Drinking Water Act and specialists test that water quality on a regular basis and then inform the users about the quality of the water. Private well owners don't enjoy the same service and it's their responsibility to monitor their own water quality. It's not difficult to do and it should be done every year. One of the first steps in starting the process is to contact a certified drinking water lab. Lists of certified labs are available on the web and you can also get a list of certified laboratories from the local county health department, possibly a water quality district or extension agents in your area. You should test every year for bacteria and nitrate. And the first time you test, and possibly every five years afterwards, you might want to do a more comprehensive test including things like pH, total dissolved solids, alkalinity, and a variety of other parameters. It is a good idea to inquire with your local health department about other parameters that might be of concern in your area, such as arsenic, selenium, or uranium. Other parameters might include pesticides or volatile organic chemicals, VOCs, which can come from agriculture, chemical spills, leaking storage tanks, dump sites, or industrial areas. Testing should also be conducted if you ever notice a change in the quality of your water. After you've contacted the testing lab, they should send you bottles and sampling instructions specific to the type of testing that you want to do. Once you receive those materials, you should open them up, familiarize yourself with what they've sent you, and read all of the instructions before the day that you plan to sample. Ideally, you want to sample on a Monday or Tuesday, and no later than a Wednesday. This is so that the samples can reach the lab and be processed before the weekend. You also want to try and sample in the morning and then mail or deliver the samples to the lab the same day. This is because the bacteria samples are only good for just over a day before they're no longer usable. Today I'm interested in the quality of the water that I'm drinking, so I've selected the kitchen faucet to sample. Ideally you want a faucet that has separate controls for hot and cold water and doesn't swivel because bacteria can reside in the cracks in those controls and give you a false positive for your bacteria test. I'm going to remove any type of treatment device that might be installed at the tap, such as a carbon filter and also an aeration screen on the tap. You want to remove that because these devices can harbor bacteria and give you a false positive on your bacteria test. It is also important to wash your hands to avoid contaminating the sample. Some parameters have special sampling instructions. Lead and copper, for instance, come from the pipes themselves and concentrations increase as water sits in the pipes. In this case, a first draw sample is required after water has been sitting in the pipes. In all cases, it is important to follow the sampling instructions provided by the lab. For a bacteria sample, I want to make sure that the faucet is very well disinfected. Today I've got some rubbing alcohol. You can also use chlorine bleach to sanitize the faucet. So I'm going to use this rubbing alcohol to thoroughly clean the mouth of the faucet. And then I'm going to let the faucet flush for a few minutes. While the lines are flushing, I'm going to go ahead and label my sample bottles. I want to include on here my name, address, date and time of sampling, and any comment I might like to have on the bottle. And I'm going to use a permanent marker or a pen that will not wash off when the bottle gets wet. Now that the line is flushed, I'm going to take the bacteria sample. First I want to turn the stream down to a pencil size stream of water so that I can easily fill the bottle. Now I will let the water flow again for three to five minutes to allow any bacteria from adjusting the faucet to be flushed away. There's a white powder in the bottle which is a preservative so I don't want to rinse the bottle. I'll fill the bottle to the 100 ml line and then recap the bottle. Oftentimes there's a seal on the bottle indicating that the bottle is sterile. But I was very cautious not to touch the inside of the bottle or the threads as I was doing that sampling. Bacteria from your fingers can give the sample a false positive for total coliform. I'll do the same thing now with the second bottle. Now I'm going to fill out the paperwork that the lab sent to me. This paperwork will include information about the samples, what I want the lab to test for, my name, contact information, date and time, possibly some other information as well. 
Once I'm finished filling out the paperwork, I replace the paperwork, the sample bottles and any packaging that they came in, into the mailing envelope. I'll seal the envelope. Now I'm off to the post office to mail the samples.